Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to do a little test experiment focusing on these guys. This is a 2N5088 NPN Bipolar Junction Transistor. And uh, I kind of feel like I'm going back in time a little bit. I spent a lot of time looking at tube circuits. Now I'm getting into pedals a little bit deeper and starting with the transistor. The amplifiers and transistors are some of my favorites uh, for a lot of the effects circuits that I really enjoy. In a lot of simple boost circuits or fuzz circuits, transistors are used to great effect. And the 2N5088 is a silicon transistor, slightly more modern and higher gain maybe than some other ones, but uh, still one that's pretty commonly used. I think you'll see it a lot in, in Big Muff Pies or in other boost circuits, and so I think it's a pretty good candidate for study. And what I want to do is kind of isolate some of the variables and just kind of hear exactly what they're doing some of the circuits that I'm going to show you and you can hear and listen to today maybe aren't necessarily realistic or complete and that you would put them in a box and make it into a pedal. But what I want to do is kind of isolate what different things are doing and in the ways that you can kind of complement a 2N5088 transistor. So basically I've got three different clips that I want you to listen to and the f I've got the, the bass clean tone. Then my first clip is going to be setting the transistor up as a boost, kind of like an LPB1 style boost, very simple or straightforward, or there's no clipping diodes, and it's just kind of a relatively um, straightforward boost to just see how much level we can get out of these things. And then second, I add on to that, kind of turning it into an Electra distortion, which adds some hard clipping diodes at the end. I believe I'm using some 1N914 diodes. And i uh, just got two of them for symmetrical clipping going from the output of the signal to ground. And that would typically refer to as hard clipping or what you would see in like a rat or other distortion type pedals. Uh, and then the last example is going to be softer clipping where you put it in a feedback loop. So you take the, the signal, comes into the base, it gets amplified, exits the collector, and then it gets fed negatively back into the circuit. Uh, back into the base and there's clipping diodes that are placed there. I'm using the same clipping diodes and I've got an, a couple extra resistors and capacitors like you would find in a tube screamer or in like a Big Muff Pi. They've got some softer clipping gain stages. Now they, they stack two of them together to get that fuzz, but it's that same type of circuit. And just wanted to show what those little circuits sound like for the kind of the purpose of science and uh, my own understanding and growth. And basically, um, I'm going to just show you those clips now, and then we'll chat a little bit about what I'm hearing, and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. So let's go ahead and take a listen. Okay, so having listened to the clips myself, this is some of my thoughts and opinions and, and kind of points of feedback. First of all, my first reflection was that actually the boost circuit or all the circuits aren't necessarily very transparent, meaning they color the signal. The EQ changes a little bit, the compression changes a little bit, and maybe some of that is the way that I've biased the circuit. I think there are, there are things that you could do to maybe change it a little bit. And one thing I actually ended up doing from when I first built the boost circuit on the breadboard is I actually reduced the input capacitor from 0.1 to 0.01 because I felt like there was a little bit too much low end and I want to trim away some of that base. Um, that's not necessarily getting into like treble booster territory, but I'm cutting a little bit of lows there uh, just because it's such a simple circuit. 
But overall, I, I was kind of surprised to hear, you know, it does certainly boost the signal and that's going to change how it interacts with the tube somewhat uh, in, in the tube amp I'm running it into. But uh, it's definitely still um, not something I would call a transparent boost, which, which is not necessarily good or bad. I think transparent is often put forward as something that is good, but actually I, I don't know if that's really true. I want the transistor. I think that's kind of some of the charm is that they offer some of that coloration. So maybe just something to be aware of on that first clip. Then moving on to the second clip with the electro distortion, I was kind of fascinated that um, the clipping was not what I expected. Uh, I've played a lot of distortion, higher gain pedals, modern pedals, and this really isn't in that category. You know, and when I when I learned that if you put the diodes in that configuration, that typically is a hard clipping sound. Um, it wasn't as saturated as I was expecting it to be. And that's probably just because the transistor, you know, I only have one gain stage. So there's, there's really not enough gain stages there to probably produce that level of clipping and then, you know, get it up to that level that you want. Um, so I kind of found myself wanting more saturation, but it's also interesting listening back to the clip, how it is, even though there's less of it, it is a harder clip than what I'm used to hearing in like, something like a Tube Screamer or a Timmy or a Klon. A low gain overdrive. It's it's a different character to the distortion. So I hear that it is a harder clip, but it definitely still is lacking a little bit in terms of um, getting this the overall amount of gain to be that saturated distortion level. Uh, but it is interesting to hear that hard clip sound more like that. And then lastly, uh, the soft clip circuit was really fascinating to me because I thought that one sounded the worst. And to me, it really seemed like that circuit simply needs more gain stages. Otherwise, it's just not going to function. Uh, so to my you know, ear, it definitely sounded like that was kind of the most interesting of the circuits. And if you look like a big enough pie, that runs basically a boost stage into that soft clipping stage. And then if you also look at like a tube screamer, that's running an op amp for the negative feedback loop. And from what I'm learning about op amps is that's basically like a bunch of transistors put into a little mini circuit. And so when I'm hearing that, wow, this really just doesn't seem to have enough gain stages, I, I definitely can understand why now. So um, I found this test to be very interesting and I think this will kind of propel me up and I can see the development of the history of the technology of these devices a little bit better. How, um, you know, I, as someone who's been in with tubes and now with the invention of these little tiny transistors, it's fascinating how they work in smaller devices and they work with smaller voltages but they aren't perfect and they're how it develops into these other, you know, um, you can see the development from the fuzz face to the, to the Big Muff Pi going from two transistors to four. And then you move into things like JFETs and MOSFETs where you've, and, and op amps, and you've got kind of a, 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 a development of the technology and, and it's been neat. And I've, I've been having some conversations with my friend Eric Vincent on this and it's been really eye-opening. So hope you guys found this interesting. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I'll see you again soon. Bye.